Hey, what's going on guys? Pritiki here, and I'm coming at you guys with another edition of Three Secrets Slash Easter Eggs, where today we're going to be taking a look at the most mysterious map of all time, Mob of the Dead. But before we get into it, I want to sort of give you guys a very big thank you, and I don't like to brag about numbers all that much, it's just a website, but honestly, you guys showed so much support and so much love on my Three Secrets Slash Easter Eggs video on Kino de Toten. I honestly don't know how or why it blew up, but a lot of you guys seem to enjoy it because I got so many subscribers and I apologize like I said I don't really like to talk about numbers all that much but I just really want to give you guys a big thank you for that and that's why I'm gonna be trying so hard in this video I'm gonna be editing so much and coming at you guys with the best possible video that I can present to you guys now without further ado let's get right into mob of the dead so the first secret we're gonna be talking about is the Nikolai and weasel connection so if you guys played mob of the dead back in its heyday everyone was so confused whenever we first heard this quote Nikolai, 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 Nikolai. Why do I keep hearing that name? Now bear in mind, Mob of the Dead came out in April 2013 and we still don't really know what this quote means. I mean, we could draw some very loose connections, but this has never been mentioned or really expanded upon in those three years besides one quote that we got in Go Rod Kravi. Nikolai, Nikolai, why do I keep hearing that name? Oh, of course. Why didn't I think of it before? Now ever since Mob of the Dead came out and after everything that's happened within Black Ops 3, we sort of know that Mob of the Dead is really an important map. Everything is based off of it. A lot of stuff that happened in Revelations and within Black Ops 3 with the Origins crew has all been impacted by Mob of the Dead. Now we know after Zetsubo no Shima that the Origins crew made a visit to Alcatraz and had some sort of interaction with those four main characters and we don't really know what happened but all we know is that they had some sort of connection with the characters on Mob of the Dead. Now, time is something we need to keep in mind of because Gorak Krabi was released in July of 2016 and Mob of the Dead was released in April of 2013. So that's over a three year difference and the zombie storyline is so crazy and we know that a bunch of stuff can be impacted by stuff from the past and stuff from the future. And we know based on interviews with Jason Blundell that the entire Black Ops 3 storyline was pretty much ready at the end of Origins. Now, even though we don't don't have a definitive answer of how Weasel can hear Nikolai and how Nikolai kind of made a parody or kind of remembered Weasel if that's what we're hearing correctly in Gorak Krovi but just imagine all the possibilities that can come from this I mean for example maybe the Weasel can hear Nikolai because he somehow knows that Nikolai is coming for him and maybe the entire Origins crew is and that they're all gonna get their blood from the characters on Mob of the Dead and maybe the events that happen on Mob of the Dead when we're trying to break the cycle maybe happen after they already took and blood from the characters on Mob of the Dead and that's why maybe Weasel can hear Nikolai because a piece of Weasel, his blood, is with Nikolai at that point in time. So even though we don't have a definitive answer, which I really do want and a lot of stuff in Zombies is still surrounded in mystery, I wanted to come at you guys with this in this video because a lot of people really did overlook that sort of Nikolai quote in Gorak Krovi and it's still kind of weird that Weasel knows Nikolai and Nikolai somehow knows that Weasel already knows about him within Mob of the dead. Moving on to our second secret, we have Stanley Ferguson. Now, for those of you guys who are not really into Mob of the Dead all that much, Stanley Ferguson is the prison guard that is killed in the beginning of the Mob of the Dead cutscene. However, something about that cutscene that you guys may or may not know is that it never really happened and that Stanley Ferguson is still alive. The cutscene really only served as an introduction to us and honestly, I don't even really think it happened because Stanley Ferguson is still very much alive after the events of Mob of the Dead. Dead. So for those of you guys who don't know, from 1933 to 1942, Stanley Ferguson worked at Alcatraz as a prison guard, and he witnessed everything that happened with Weasel, Sal, Finn, and Billy. And if you guys don't know that story, basically, Weasel makes a plan to escape from Alcatraz, and he gets the help of the hardcore criminals, which are Sal, Finn, and Billy. However, the promises that Weasel made were empty, and they find out about him, and they want to get revenge on Weasel, so they lure him to the roof and kill him on New Year's Eve 1933. Then obviously the authorities find out what happened and all three of them are sentenced to death by electric chair on January 19th 1934. And once all four of them officially die within the real world the whole entire purgatory starts and all the events on Mob of the Dead are set into motion. Then sometime after 1942 Stanley is told by Mr. Rapt to meet the reporter to tell him the story of Alcatraz. Now 
for those of you guys who don't know these two characters, Mr. Rat is the sort of alias of the Shadow Man, and the reporter is, well, the reporter. He doesn't have an official name, at least not yet. And so after they both meet up, the reporter does an interview on Stanley, and this might have actually been recorded because Stanley told the reporter everything that happened on Alcatraz. And if you guys remember correctly, at the end of the Mob of the Dead Easter egg, we have to pick up these sort of audio files in order for the characters to find out exactly what happened before all of the purgatory stuff started. So like I said, there is still sort of a chance that the interview between the reporter and Stanley was recorded and somehow the audio tapes ended up in Mob of the Dead in order to tell the characters exactly what happened. Anyways, the reporter talks about this on his way to Shadows of Evil after Mr. Rapt enlists him to do some undercover stuff like finding out about three doozies and a floozy, also known as the Shadows of Evil crew, and recovering some artifacts from the South Pacific and Russia. We can hear him talk about this in the radios in Shadows of Evil. And now speaking about the reporter, he isn't mentioned again until the cipher in Der Eisendrack. And apparently Richtofen knew him because he was going to deliver the summoning key to him. So we might be missing a cipher or something because we don't really know how these two characters would have a connection, but here's how the cipher goes. I met the reporter who was to deliver the artifact. He said he was going to bring it on a truck in his crate. But when I arrived, the reporter was babbling and acting weirdly, waving a letter in his hand, telling me to stay away. The crate containing the artifact had been sealed with some ancient magic, and when I told him I must have the artifact and move towards the crate, he attacked me, I acted in self-defense, stabbing him in the chest. So there you have it, Richtofen apparently was going to get the summoning key all easy and done from the reporter, but the reporter was acting weirdly, maybe thanks to Dr. Monty or the Shadow Man, and he was going to attack Richtofen, and Richtofen had no other choice but to kill the reporter, and something really interesting is that we can actually see the reporter's rotting corpse behind one of the barriers in Shadows of Evil. Now we still don't know what is inside that letter he's holding, cause the letter is to M, that might be Dr. Monty, that might be Maxis or someone, and I know that this all differs from Mob of the Dead, but it's still very interesting to see that a minor character like Stanley Ferguson was actually implemented to this, and he somehow knows the Shadow Man, which is still a very unique idea, and it just adds more fuel to the fire of the theory that Stanley is actually in control of Mob of the Dead. Now the final easter egg I got for you guys actually has to do with the scraps of paper that are located all around the map. So for those of you guys who don't know, the scraps of paper have been a sort of tradition and something expected within the newer zombies maps. But Mob of the Dead was actually the first one to do this and the thing it forms isn't really something very groundbreaking but it does provide a lot of backstory to the weasel's character. So once all the pieces are formed together, it forms this comic book image. And obviously we see a superhero character carrying a damsel in distress away, however all around the paper there are tons of criticisms by somebody known as the editor. Now for those of you who don't know, the weasel is actually a comic book guy. He likes to draw a lot, he likes to make up his own stories, and this is sort of a submitted post that he sent to somebody which we only know as the editor. And also something else, this character is named Icarus, which is also what weasel calls the plane on Mob of the Dead. So if we take a look at one of the ciphers located around the map, we can actually see that Weasel was sending this as a submission to the editor. Here is how the cipher goes and I quote, Enclosed are some more recent illustrations from my proposed comic strip, Icarus from Mars. While I understand that you were less than enthusiastic about my previous submissions, I would urge you to look again with fresh eyes. Late in the hospital means I've had more time than ever to devote to my craft and my artwork is improving by leaps and bounds. Eagerly waiting your response, Albert Arlington. So when you read that and you really see what the editor had to write back to him, you kind of feel bad for the weasel's character and I kind of like that they added that. Even though this doesn't really tie to other maps and doesn't really progress the overall storyline altogether, it does show us a side of weasel that we really don't see on the map and once you look at it like this, you can really see how it's possible to add so much character to one person on only one map of a zombies game. Now if you guys remember correctly, once you guys load up Black Ops 2 Zombies, you are sometimes hit with a journal entry. And if you guys didn't play
play Black Ops 2 when it was the main game, these would always switch depending on the DLC. So the one we have right now is for Origins and there's no other way to change that, but if you guys played during Mob of the Dead, there was actually a journal entry from Al's journal. And here is how it goes and I quote, I've completed the aircraft schematics using only components that I know can be found within the grounds. However, everything hinges on gaining the trust and help of some of the faculty's most notorious residents. They may make fun of me sometimes, but they know I can do anything if I set my mind to it. I've planned enough jobs for them in the past to know that I can convince them to join me as Icarus takes flight. Speaking of Icarus, same old story, the editor defaced my art, scrawling nasty little comments on every page. When I get out, I'll show him how wrong he is. So it seems that Al really holds a lot of hate towards this person, and if you guys actually notice, on the comic book, the editor writes a little comment like, a flying man, impossible. And that's actually a little nod and kind of a reference that superheroes weren't around at this time. And it's kind of incredible that Al is such a creative genius that he technically in this universe was the first person to ever create a superhero comic. And like I said before, this just flushes out Al's overall character and you really have to appreciate the guy. He's going through a lot of stuff. He's hated by his teammates, which is something you don't really see within zombies. And this map is overall one big mysterious emotional roller coaster that we still do not really understand the means of. And that is why it is definitely one of the greatest maps of all time. So there you guys have it. Those are my three secrets slash easter eggs on mob of the dead like i said before i really want to thank you guys for supporting this series and i kind of want to set a like goal for this i'm really pumped up to release this video so if you can hit 100 likes that would be very much appreciated it's really not that high of a goal because i really don't want to fall flat on my face but i'm pretty sure we can hit it because you guys are completely fucking awesome so there you guys have it if you guys did enjoy this video then make sure to drop a like down below and also subscribe for more call of duty zombies videos and i'll catch you guys in the next one